Hey everybody, the Reese here, and welcome back to Lost Odyssey. Now, first off, I'm an idiot. We're also in Namara at all. The reason I say I'm an idiot is because, for some unknown reason, unbeknownst to me, I had my skills set out like so. Where the bloody hell are they? Right, yeah, here we go. Yeah, for some reason, I had my skills set out in this way so that I had all three of these in my skills and well after figuring it out I don't know why I didn't see this sooner it basically shows that I don't read because that actually says enables use of black ma black and white magic up to level 3 for some reason I thought if you only had level 3 like black white magic for example you'd only be able to use level 3 black and white magic but that's not the case, you're able to use everything before that and above. So, yeah, I feel dumb. <laughs> now that I've figured that out. Anyway, that should be level 7. Oh no, 8. I forgot you've le you've learned level 7. No, you're learning level 7. But I'm actually just going to show, I'll try to, what it is I do in order to level up my party. I couldn't get them to level 52 because... As soon as you hit level 49, it becomes incredibly tedious because you only get 1 XP per battle, regardless of what you go against. Or you get 2 XP if you go against two of the Silver Kalalons. Right, but yeah, here we go. Essentially what you do is casting support on Ming and Sarah, and then you make Ming and Sarah do gamble because they have high spell power compared to everybody else and hopefully this works but because we use gamble it's well a gamble no I think we did it I hope the thing is when I was using like Jansen and Ming they were both doing they were like killing the Kalalons instantly which it kind of sucks now that that doesn't that doesn't happen. There we go. There you go. Sarah is level forty-five now. But I I mainly only kept Sarah in my party to level her up and to get her to learn skills, which has been happening. So that's good. The only person left to level up is the two remaining mortals and also um cook because I haven't leveled Cook up in forever for one reason or another. Now, do I go to the Northern Cape or the Black Cave? I don't think there's anything on the Northern Cape, aside from a random ass, like items maybe, either way. Okay. Well, the cool thing is, um, Kaim and Seth and Ming, wait, no, not Ming, Kaim and Seth have learned every skill they can from Jensen and Mac. They still need to learn, you know, stuff from Cook, and also she needs to level up to 49 or to 52, preferably 52, and then she can, she'll have all her skills. But it's good because it means Kaim and Seth will have... Well, they've got quite a big lead on anybody else. Either way. But yeah, I still can't believe it. I didn't switch to Jensen. God damn it. <laughs> I said I was going to and never did. The hell is this? Zagan. Oh yeah, nobody has factual analysis. Oh dear. And we have a few Dark Sorcerers. That ain't good. Both go for Dark Sorcerers. And you can do Shadow. And you can do Shadow. And you can also do Shadow. Oof. That isn't gonna kill them. Oh my god, you do zero damage. Oh my god, I should have hit the other one. Never mind. Oh, I know it's going to counter attack. Yeah. But never mind. It'll only do 
like 20 damage. Yeah. Another thing I found useful with Numara at all is because you use quite a lot of magic as Kaim and Seth because they're using casting support which actually costs quite a bit essentially what you can do is just use up as much magic as you need then leave Numara at all and fast travel back to Numara at all it's quite useful uh... yeah Dark Sorceress ah oh, crap I was actually going to go to the ship I may back out of the Black Cave. Now I think I'll, I'll make it to the next area then I'll back out and get on the ship. The only reason for that is because I think there's a few cutscenes that- oh god, I failed. I was itching my head. They're not paying attention. Bye! 2095! Uh oh. Ha! Huh, you still did zero damage. Good job. Yeah, they are ugly. I didn't realize how ugly. There we go. Woohoo! Level heads win battles. Wow, that actually gave us four XP. They're giving us well, actually no, that's because there was four enemies. Derp. I keep forgetting that. And yeah, if you look at our money, you can see just how much time I spent within Numara at all. I think keeping Sarah would be good. Yeah, because it means she'll learn the skills. I don't even know how close she is to learning. Oh wait, she learned anti-blind. I've just been doing what I do with all the immortals and just equipping every accessory to her. It works out pretty good. Either way, formation, Jansen. Oh wait, crap. We are Done, done. Yeah, now we can actually search this place. I've been over here already. God damn it. I fell for that twice. And another battle. Or not. Oh god, there's a, another body. I can't get past this, right? Yeah? I guess so. It just slows me down to a crawl for some reason. Oh wait, pick up. Yeah, pick it up. Whatever it is, goddess medicine. The bloody hell does that do? You watch this is where we find out we've had it all along. So, yep. Um, ah, revives the KO ally and fully restores their HP. So it's essentially a full restore or a full phoenix down. Wow, oh, we actually move pretty quick through that wind. Ha, not too smart, eh? Not too smart, eh? Oh, it's these. Uh-oh. That thing in the back is going to cast a curse. He'll put a spell on us. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to say that. Uh, Shadow, you don't have spit. Oh, you do. Oh, yeah, you still have the bangle equipped. Lovely. Good stuff. Bye-bye indeed. Oh, I don't think they're going to do enough to kill the thing at the back. And it's probably casting Stare, to be honest. It seems to like to petrify the uh, the party. I don't know how much that'll do. 151. Stare. I'm oh, not jamming. Don't hit Mac. Good. Pretty sure jamming slows down your skill. Everybody attack. Everybody on the offensive. Whoop. And Max is gonna kill him. Sorry, Phil. God, with a bruiser ring, he'd do a lot more damage. I should probably equip him with the bru bruiser ring, to be fair. Come on, little Mac. I think I have like more than one anyway. Don't I? Yep. Good stuff. Yeah, oh, there's another body. Lovely. 
Wait, is this a, a dream? That'll be a yes! God damn it. I mean, I'm not really bothered, but... Jeez. The Tragedy of the Butcher General Everyone knows this general as the Butcher. He is strong in battle, a skilled tactician. He has mastered the te techniques of turning the specifics of topography and timing to his advantage. And he is outstanding, above all, in the skills of an individual warrior. Victory on the battlefield, however, does not lead straight to butchery. Many generals have been nicknamed for their military prowess, the Victorious, the Indomitable, the Invincible, but only one is known as the Butcher. That just makes it sound like he cuts people to pieces. That's what a butcher does. Do you know why that is, Kaim? The general himself asks as he gloats over the vast mountain of corpses. Kaim does not reply. He entered the fray as a mercenary, but his exploits far outclass those of the regular troops. For the general to call a man into his presence and speak to him face to face, it's apparently an honor beyond even most officers' wildest dreams. Not just from winning battles, the general goes on. That would be too simple. Just kill the enemy general, take the big one's head and the battle's over, right? Kaim nods in silence. That is how this battle should have ended instead of continuing for three days. The enemy general proposed a surrender on the first day. He offered his head in exchange for the lives of his men and the villagers. But the butcher rejected the offer and continued his all-out attack on an enemy that had lost the will to fight. Annihilating them in the process. The last day was used to burn down the forest into which the unresisting villagers had fled. What the balls? The real battle doesn't end when you raise the victory song on the battlefield. If even one person survives, the seed of hatred lives on. I'm talking about the desire for revenge. Nothing good can come from leaving that behind. You must cut the cause of future troubles at the root. This is why the troops under the general's command killed the young men of the village, after they were through exterminating the enemy troops. They also killed the unarmed old people. They killed mothers fleeing with children in their arms. They killed the children they stripped from those mothers' corpses. They're messed up. Do you think me cruel, Kaim? I do. Kaim answered, nodding. The officers gathered around, then went pale, but the butcher himself smiled magnanimously and went on. You didn't do any of those things, I gather. My job is to kill soldiers on the battlefield. My contract doesn't call for anything else. And I'm saying that that is a foolish line of thinking. The soldiers you killed have brothers and children. Do you plan to go on living in fear of their revenge? That it's sheer t stupidity. If you wipe out the entire family, you can live without such worries, you see. The general laughs uproariously, and the surrounding officers all smile in response. Kaim, however, his expression unchanged, starts to walk away. Where are you going, Kaim? We are through talking, aren't we? My contract has ended. Never mind that, just wait. When the general says this, several s soldiers stand to block Kaim's way. Listen, Kaim. I've had reports of your performance from the front lines. What do you say to fighting under me from now on? You can exploit your martial talents to the fullest. I am not interested. What's that? I will never draw my sword to an unarmed opponent. The butcher is momentarily taken aback, the shock written clearly on his face. You still don't understand, do you? You should try reading a little history. You'll find that hatred only breeds more hatred. That is what inevitably brings down even the most prosperous nations and powers, which is why I make absolutely sure to sever it at the root. If you ask me, General, war and butchery are two different things. What are you? The same goes for valour and brutality. You, a lonely mercenary, dare to lecture me? Ooh. Are we gonna fight him? Let me tell you something about hatred too, General. It doesn't evaporate from cutting off a life. It remains. In the earth, in the clouds, in the wind. I have lived my life in that belief, and I intend to go on doing so. You stupid... Butcher is the work of cowards. That is what I believe. Where do you get the nerve? The general glares at Kaim and his men draw their swords. At that very moment, from within the, the scorched forest come the cries of soldiers. 
Here are some. Five of them still left. No, six. Over there. They went that way. Distracted by the shouts, the general commands his men. Hurry, capture them. Don't let even one of them get away. Hurry, hurry, you can't let them escape. The men blocking Kain begin to fidget, none of, and none of them think to stop him as he calmly walks away. Do you hear me? You must not let them escape. If even one of them gets away, I'll have your heads. All of you. The general's calls are clearly those of a coward. 